Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, in these recordings, I choose an object or a subject and talk boringly about that thing so that your mind can just slow down and relax and maybe you may even choose to fall asleep. So during this recording, I'd like you to let go of everything, completely let go of everything. Relax deeply and just be bored by my boringness, my general boringness. Even if the subject is not as boring as you think you'd like it to be, remember that I am really the most boring human being on the planet. And that's no joke. I really am the most boring person. So allow my superpower of boringness to spread through the internet into your lovely ears And soothe your mind. Calm your brain. And relax. Deeply, deeply relax your body. That's not bad, is it, for the price? For the price you're paying? Oh, you're not paying? Oh, good. It's free. It's not bad for a free service. You get to deeply relax. That's going to be my new thing now. Instead of deeply relax, I'll take the gift there. Deeply. Relax or relax. Yeah. But anyway, I'm not really here to make silly noises. Um, Although, you know, I'm happy to do that because it's my favourite thing. But um, let's get back to being serious. So I had a, a request on YouTube. Um... I think it was I I like kissing toads or something. I forget the name of the YouTube channel. Um, but anyway, he asked me to do a, a podcast, uh, uh, do one of these with the subject of games, games, and then he he said any type of games, games. Huh. So I thought, okay. Uh, and I started thinking, well, I've started thinking now actually, what kind of games? Because there's lots of type of g- 
games, isn't there? There's board games and very well, um, well named really because they're boring. Um, although some people love them, some people have game night. We'll play board games tonight. It's Tuesday. Oh, that's a that's a day I'd look forward to. I don't, I don't. I just am not into that stuff. I guess each to their own, isn't it? Some people um, love train spotting. Some people like making fun of train spotters. I'm neither of those. I'm just quite. Uh, I'm quite neutral on the subject. Because I can see, I've got a little bit of a train spotter inside me. I've got a little train spot. No, actually, that sounds wrong. Um, I've got. Yeah, that sounds really wrong, doesn't it? Sounds like I maybe became really good friends with a train spotter. Um, I have an understanding a little bit. Of this. Okay I'll explain it. When I was about. Probably about 11. 11. Maybe. Years old. I had this book. And it was a little book. But it was full of train numbers so basically it was a train spotting book full of train numbers and the idea was to cross out all the different numbers that you get to see now regardless of how absolutely mind dumbing putting your hair out tedious that sounds to a to 11 year old maybe it's it's not quite as boring because there's a lot of things that adults do that 11 year olds have never done and that are more enjoyable than sitting on a a platform waiting for a train to turn up so that you can cross up cross off a registration number I mean you know but there's something about finishing something about completion something about having such a big task ahead of you And once you start that journey, some people feel that they have to continue that journey until the very last number is crossed off. And that in itself can have such um, a satisfactory feeling arise that actually train spotters are happy. What they're doing makes them happy. And my, you know, I used to make fun of train spotters when I was about seven. I remember I used to, um, you know, chuck conkers at them and things like that. Yeah, it's like any other seven-year-old. Um, pour milk over their head. You know, just normal stuff. Um, send them rattlesnakes in the post. You know, just normal things that you do to a train spotter when you're seven. That's what I'm just saying. 
Uh, these are all adults. I didn't know any kids that train spotted. We were too busy kissing girls and boys and stuff at that age. Didn't have time. Busy building relationships. Didn't have time to sit around waiting for a train. But I got a lot of respect for train spotters. In a way. Because... First of all, they're doing something that they absolutely love doing. Now, there's a lot of people in the world that never, have never done that. Some people never find out what they love doing. Because either they haven't searched or they haven't searched enough. Because if you search long enough, you will find something that That tickles you in places that nothing else does. Okay, that sounded weird. It reaches place, you know. It, it it stimulates the. Uh, it stimulates a part of your brain. That's what I'm trying to say. It stimulates a part of your brain, gives you something that nothing else can possibly provide you. There's a poem there somewhere, isn't there? I might write a poem about train spotters. But they're happy because they've found the thing that they love doing. And you know what? They're doing it. And they're going against society's rules and expectations and they're doing it anyway they're going out there early in the morning maybe at the weekend if they have to work or go to school college whatever they're there on a Saturday morning early 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 drinking out of a flask they're Whatever it is they drink out of a flask. Early. But they're happy. Really, really happy. Doing what they do. And it does bring meaning to their life. Brings purpose to their life. Because you know what I realised? I realised. Well, I'll, I'll give you a, you know, a, a background to this realisation. For a long time, I'm talking 40, 45 years. Ever since I was really capable of, well, ever, ever since I really kind of thought about stuff, which is a, lot, a long time, I've, I was a, a thinker when I was a kid, it's a lot, I th- used to think about stuff, I used to contemplate a lot, and being happy is a state of mind. Obviously. But you know what? People that are super rich, living on a yacht, or, you know, traveling the world, they're no happier than a train spotter sitting on a track, or not on a track. Obviously, that's that's an unhappy train spotter, isn't it, if they're sitting on the track? Uh, sitting on the, the platform waiting for a train to pull up so they could take down the number. Now I imagine if there's any train spotters listening to this, first of all they'd probably be perhaps a bit thankful that at last after, you know, maybe 150 years, 
someone's come to their aid, someone's come to their defence. After all this time, some, when I say 150 years, I don't mean of them doing it, but of trains being around, you know, 200 years maybe. But at last, someone's come to the defence of a train spotter. And let's face it, if I hadn't done it, who else would? Unlikely to ever be, ever be done. So I feel like I've helped in a way that is immeasurable with a ruler or a tape measure. And I don't mean because it's so micro, microscopic, that a tape measure won't even, really, you can't see anything. I'm talking it's too big. Too big, yeah. Not tiny. You know, you know, you try and pull it out, the, the the tape measure just won't register it. It's like, come on, it's got to be at least two inches there, and nothing. Like, no, it doesn't doesn't register. Like, that's impossible. You know, no, it must be cold. It's because it's cold. That's why. Then I realised maybe I shouldn't do it outside and should measure it in the warm. But it's not about me. This is about train spotters. It's about train spotters. And the you know, train spotters are probably listening to this thinking, yeah. 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 You're right. Train spotting is groovy, man. Train spotting is good. But I imagine some train spotters listening to this thinking, I'd rather be on the yacht. I'd rather be a millionaire and uh, be, you know, spending time with models and and have fast cars and have money. I mean, why do you feel I'm sitting on this train platform at 6.30 on a Saturday morning? It's because I don't have anything else. I don't have a wife or a husband. I'm making out that women train spot. We all know it's only men. But let's let's pretend for a second that women train spot. <laughs> let's pretend. Let's pretend. Um, I guess there's some people would rather be living on a yacht or sleeping in a mansion every night than train spotting. But I reckon if you took a a train spotter out of his council house and put him living in a, you know, huge mansion with millions and millions of pounds in the bank, his own yacht, own private jet, and... Unlimited supply of Mars bars, okay? I reckon that that train spotter would still wake up early on a Saturday morning and want to go to the local train station and sit on a platform. Yep, that's what I think. And you know what? I'm going to decide, I've decided it's fact. Because, you know, people don't, people don't seem that interested in facts anymore. You know, I noticed that in, there was a time in the past, we didn't have any internet, and people would just regurgitate stuff that they'd heard, and then a the person they that they told would then regurgitate it to someone else, but it would get distorted along the way. Uh, there's a term for it, but I don't know if it's it's socially acceptable to use this term. But Chinese whispers, where you know it's, it's like a photocopy machine. As the ink runs out or whatever is used to make the image or, you know, the dark 
paper, uh, the printing or whatever, I say whatever because I don't know if they use ink anymore. Wasn't there some kind of special thing? Anyway, it's not relevant. Well, it is to the to the people using it, but with a photocopy, you've got the original image, and then you've got the photocopy. And then when you keep photocopying off of the photocopy version, eventually it starts to fade. It loses its original sharpness. So when people tell a story or tell a fact, the fact changes over time because the story or the is gradually distorted. Not purposefully, just just happens because we're humans. And then eventually it almost it can be transformed into something completely different. You know, it's like transformed from uh, Bill Gates used to is a used to eat a lot of bananas when he was first building uh, his first computer. He used to eat bananas all day long when he was building his first computer. To um, Bill Gates. Is a banana. Or Bill Gates. Invented volcanoes. And that can just go in such a strange direction. But I'm into facts. I like facts. And. We can now. Fact check. On YouTube. Even though YouTube. Not YouTube. on uh, Online. On the internet. Even though. There's a lot of misinformation. And just wrong stuff. And made up stuff. And blatant lies. Online. It's still going to be more correct. Than the person that spoke to you. And told you. Because basically. The only information we can really tell each other. Is information about ourselves. And even that might be a lie. Interesting, isn't it? I think I actually sat with some train spots once. And I think that was with my brother when I was about 11 and he had his book. And I think I might have had a book as well. He used this to... Um, I think he was planning to fill it, you know, to to cross off all the different um, numbers of the trains that he found. And I used mine to uh, stop my table from wobbling. I put it under one of the, you know, thingies. So... It, it was useful for both of us. So I didn't realise before I decided to make this recording that I was going to end up being the national champion of train spotters. Which is what I've turned into. The national champion of train spotters. Wow. Wow. I suppose if you're going to big up anyone I mean train spotters seems to be the the thing you know the obvious one they sit out in all weathers 
Some of them don't even wear hats. Most of them wear trousers. And that's going to be quite uncomfortable. Because trousers, I find, seem to reach up a little bit too too tightly in the crotch when you're sitting down. Which is okay temporarily. Because having my blood circulation cut off from my groin is one of my favourite things. But it can be quite nice to have some uh, sweatpants or we call them tracksuit bottoms here. And uh, to keep us feeling nice and relaxed and smooth and free to just, you know, it's always lovely. I think I've um, I've become a saviour, the saviour of train spotters. I just hope I get treated a bit better than the last saviour. Just a little bit of uh, respect, a little bit of appreciation. A bit of cake. So that's the end of my podcast. It's train spotting, not games, apparently. So thank you for very much for, 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 for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.